Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's video is on fabric area and fabric sheet reinforcement in Revit 2018. Here I am in Revit 2018. In the structure tab of the ribbon, there is a panel called reinforcement. In here, there are two commands for fabric reinforcement. One is fabric area and the other is fabric sheet. I have in this model a floor slab that is just a foundation slab 6 inch. The difference between a fabric area versus a fabric sheet is that a fabric sheet places a single sheet on the host itself, whereas fabric area is an area that you define to place multiple fabric sheets that are overlapping each other in a certain direction. Let's start with a fabric sheet. I can start the command. When I do so, it's looking for a host. And if you look at the command line in the lower left corner, you'll see it says click within a structural wall or floor to place the fabric sheet. As you can see, when I move my mouse into that host area, it'll display. In the type selector, I can click fabric sheet and there are multiple sizes for you to work with. You pick the one that you want to work with. If you need to, you can go to the type properties and get into the different aspects of the default major and minor lap splice lengths, the direction, types, the rounding overrides, the material, the sheet mass, <clears throat> and so on. Anything that you change in here will change, obviously, all the types of the particular one that you're working with. I'll leave the defaults as is. And you'll also notice over here under the instance properties for partition, you can specify a nomenclature if you need to, say um, FS dash. You can specify the location as being the top of the host or the bottom of the host. You can specify the additional cover offset as well. You can also go into the rounding overrides, and if I click Edit, you'll see that the override is not turned on by default. And if you click this checkbox in here, you can specify that override for the method and the increment. I can either be up or down or nearest for both the fabric sheet dimension and the segment. Again, once you go to place it, you'll also notice, and I'll zoom in, when you get to the very edge, it will want to um, accept and agree with the host rebar cover limitations. And you'll see a blue dashed line. It might be hard to see, but if you look carefully, you can see it. And that's as far as you go. If you go past it, it'll alter and get messed up. So try as much as you can to stay within the limits of that cover and click to place it. Now, once you've placed it, and you finish the command, you'll notice that the host itself is containing that one single sheet of fabric. And it too also knows to agree with the other edges of that host. If I go in here and draw a section, and we can go look at that section. Let's change this to a fine level of detail. Switch this to three inches equal to a foot. <clears throat> and I'll zoom in here. Here you can see that structural fabric reinforcement that I have specified. If I go in here and I switch, say, for example, the location to go to bottom, it'll move down. And if you click top, it'll be its default position up here. It is also agreeing with the top edge as well as the bottom edge for its limitations of its placement. You do have additional cover offset. So if I put in here uh, one inch, you'll notice that it drops down by an inch. Uh, if you go too far past the thickness of the slab, it will not let you do this. Let's head back over to the plan view. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete what I've done. And we'll take a look at the command one more time. Now when you work with that fabric sheet command and you start the command, there's also tag on placement and bend sketch. Bend sketch is such that you need to draw it specific to the um, host itself. 
let's say, for example, I put in a floor slab edge. I'm going to head over to the 3D view, and I'll place this floor slab edge over here. Let's look at this back in plan view, and you can see that it's placed here. We'll create a section, and we'll go look at that section. We'll shade it, set it to a fine level of detail, and we can use, for example, join geometry to join those two together. Now, if I want to do a fabric sheet where I can draw it across here, down here, back this way and up, I can do so by starting the command and clicking Bend Sketch. Once I do this, again, in the lower left corner, it'll say pick a valid host for the bent fabric sheet. So I can either pick the slab or I can pick the footing. In this situation, I'll pick the slab. And once I've done so, it goes into sketch mode. Everything's very light and gray, and it allows you to sketch the design that you need. It also gives you the green dashed lines to help you understand the cover limitations. So in other words, try to stay within those boundaries for your sketch. I'll go ahead and draw my fabric sheet like so. And again, <clears throat> specifying the type of fabric sheet, the size, and all the parameter information that you need as well. When you're finished, you hit the green check mark and it will create it. And you can also click this arrow to flip the wire orientation if you need to. Let's look at this in 3D. You'll notice that the sketch is created. <clears throat> and because I created the sketch off of the plane of the section, it started here and went across. Now if I go in and I select it, I can adjust its position. So we'll take this and we will move this and place it exactly where we need. Once we've done that, we can adjust other aspects here. Longitudinal cut length says no cut. Um, span direct, the bend direction can be major or minor. And once you've made some adjustments, you'll see it's, it gets adjusted accordingly. Looking at it one last time in 3D, we'll switch this to wireframe. And you can see your results. <clears throat> if you need to, you can select that fabric sheet and again, adjust the overrides and whatnot. Uh, and so for the first command, the fabric sheet, that's the command itself and that's how it functions. Now let's take a look at the fabric area command. I'll go ahead and delete what I've created. And from here, start the fabric area command. And when I do so, again, it will tell me in the lower left corner, pick the structural floor or wall for fabric area reinforcement. And I'll select my host. Once I do this, it goes into sketch mode. What it's asking us to do is to specify the area of the fabric that we're going to be placing all the fabric in. And the fabric sheets are going to be overlapping each other. So if I draw an area, say like this, Actually, let's draw the area this way. You'll notice that <clears throat> that fabric sheet starts to get placed. And you'll also notice that there are four boxes. You'll also notice that there are two parallel lines that are purple, magenta. This represents the major direction of the fabric area. Now, in this particular floor slab that we're working with, the foundation slab, the major direction was horizontal. And you typically place the fabric area along the same direction or close to the same direction. Um, <clears throat> so if you need to change it, you can click major direction here and then either use the pick line method and pick another line, or you can click this line here and draw the direction, say this way. <clears throat> You'll also notice that the fabric area is getting placed. <clears throat> the direction is um, at an angle. And with these boxes here, what they're telling you is that when you place a check mark, that's the initial major direction placement, um, initial placement end, and then it rolls out away from it. Same thing on this side. 
and it will place it and roll it away from here. If we go to take a look at the fabric area uh, under the type properties, <clears throat> it just says structural fabric area one. If we go to the type properties, it has basic identity data you can input here. In the instance property, it tells you the fabric sheet and you can click in here and pick a different size. Uh, you can, again, you can specify the location, the lap splicing position. It could be aligned. It could be uh, major halfway staggered, uh, major passing staggered, so on. Pick what you think makes the most sense for your design. Again, specifying any additional cover offset if you need to. And then specifying the lap splice length. Right now it's set to 8 inches. If I change this to 4 inches, you can see its position gets altered. <clears throat> Once you've designed the fabric sheet area to the um, properties that you want, when you finish, the boundary that you've created will basically cut that fabric sheet to that size. And now you can see your end results. <clears throat> if we take a look at this in 3D, you can see what your uh, overlapping splicing looks like. Now, what's interesting about reinforcement in Revit is that majority of the rebar <clears throat> and the uh, path reinforcing and the area reinforcing um, and the rebar couplers, you can adjust the visibility such that it looks three-dimensional and it has thickness, like a radius thickness and a diameter thickness. Whereas with fabric area and fabric sheet commands, if you were to select it, there is no property information that specifies that visibility state. So it really just looks like true wire mesh, if you will. <clears throat> if you need to, you can place your mouse over the entire fabric sheet area, and then you can click Edit Sketch. It goes back into Sketch Mode, and again, we can change any property data we need. For example, a major span direction, and I'll use this direction this time. <clears throat> and if I uncheck this and I check this, you'll see its positioning alters a little bit as well. When you hit the green check mark, it'll finish placing it. And there you have your uh, fabric area <clears throat> for all your fabric sheets. I hope this video helps uh, for those who um, need to work with these two commands. Thank you.